I'd like to call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals for October. Uh, we have extra members tonight. We've got everybody. Everybody. One alternate. One alternate. Okay, good. So, Mr. Burgess Alder tonight, correct? Yes. Okay. First item on the agenda is the approval of the uh, September meeting, which we all had a copy of in our packet. Chance to read it over. If there are no additions or corrections, I would take a motion for the minutes. I move we approve the minutes as presented. Support. Any discussion? You know, roll call it. Yes, no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, minutes adopted as written. The next item on our agenda is for 612 East Front Street. Do we have someone to speak on that? Yeah. Like step up and give us your name, please, and uh, give us a little explanation on what you're uh, asking to do. Okay, my name is John Holmes. I'm the owner. Um, I have uh, a couple more pieces of handout, if right. I can make. Different than what we have here? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is a map from 1906, an insurance map. Of I love those maps. Um, the way the properties were joined together as one as a church. Yeah. And then they were put up uh, in my research. If you, where do you get, yeah, back to the microphone so we can get hear your, please. <laughs> so, so um, I didn't split these properties apart, um, contrary to what information that has been presented to you. Um, this was <clears throat> an insurance map from 1906 um, showing that the St. Lutheran Church owned the two properties on Finch and Front. That's actually the third property. Be in that third property is six twelve East Front. Um, I'm sorry, which property on so, the map is yours? Okay, so right on, right on the corner here, you'll see Saint uh, Stephen's Lutheran Church. Yeah. All three of those properties were one at one time. Which and property is yours that we're talking about tonight? My property that we're talking about tonight is the one back by where it says thirteen that small property right there okay. that is going to be the property that we're talking about tonight oh they were all one property at one time and the way that the the lot got to the size that it did is because of the way they split things off in 1953 according to the deeds that i've got from records deeds is when they split that back property of 612 off of the main properties then in 63 it was 54 excuse me and then 63 was when they divided off my other property which is 22 or 242 finch um that's when some other stuff where you see the goofy lines in the back um and at one time i did own directly behind 612 but that's when i bought 242 finch and all the divisions were done prior to me buying these properties. I did sell to the church in 2003. It was the driveway there was non-use because there was a fence that went down between it. The church approached me after I bought 242 Finch about I, buying that property we don't, we don't have house numbers yeah there's no house so, numbers sorry, sorry. Right, so i'm confused <laughs> as to what is what um, so uh, i'm looking at the map unfortunately up there yeah and we're looking and at we're this looking at this this is right here in the corner that is two four two where it says parsonage where it says parsonage that's two four two finch yep. finch and you own that i own that okay i never owned the actual where it says school I never owned that. That's always been a church. And the one 
This is the one we're talking about tonight. And this is, okay. and not showing on the map is Front Street right here. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Of the maps themselves. So with my phone, um, the Heritage uh, Museum had this information for uh, where I got all this information. So that just gives you a background of when these properties got divided the way they did. And it wasn't anything that I did. It was all done prior to me. The only thing I did was sold off a section that was between the church and the parsonage to the church itself. Because we could, at that point in time, it wasn't usable ground, that driveway, because there was a fence that divided the two buildings. When I sold that off, we took the fence down and then the church could use that as a driveway. Um, the back portion of that also went to the church at that point in time. Um, and that was in 2003. Uh, so again, 612 was never, they never owned, it was the way it was drawn and separated in 53. They never owned anything larger than the 40 by 49. So that was the original lot size. Um, I know it's kind of confusing and it's a lot to take in, um, but that's where we got to where we are today. Where, where is the south end of your property line? I guess it'd be the south end of your property line. Is it what we have in this, what we have squared off pretty much right close to your house? Yes. Yes. It is. Front Street is the the, so the south property line of which would be the backyard uh, of fin or Front Street is real close to that. You, so the property is less than 50 feet deep. Less than 50 feet deep, just shy. And, and 49. Feet wide. Yep. In my, in my, in looking at the picture, I see there was a garage directly behind 612 Front Street. And I think the church kept that. And that's why the property is so narrow or so shallow. The house right next to me, 616, that backyard goes back another 40 feet, okay. which would, you know, if they were dividing it off correctly, to me, that's the way it should have been done, but it wasn't. So this is the, what we've got today, that size, small size of lot. So that's where we're at. Um, so what I'm trying to do is just... In, basically bring this house up to somewhat. Um, there is three bedrooms in there right now. There was a small kitchen that was, um, didn't have room for a dining room table. Um, so what I'm trying to do, because this is a old, it's a combination of a loom framed and a like whole barn frame with tuck, uh, uh, building it's hard for me to, I can't really take walls out without really changing things um, in the home itself. So I'm keeping the home and all the walls pretty much intact. If I just enclose that front porch, that will allow me to, without getting into major wall or moving and support of the house itself, allow me to put a small area in for a dining room table. I, do I understand correctly that you're not proposing to change the footprint of the house? All I'm you're, you're just but, but, to close the existing porch. The existing don't front porch. porch. I don't want to don't want to expand the porch. Um, I just okay. want to enclose that, okay. and then that will give me the the footage that I need inside. This over here. This. What's this? So this this is just the measurement. So this is where the porch is now on the side. Yeah. Um, and then and what's this rectangle? This is just a, that's just a driveway right now. That's the driveway. You're yeah. not you're not putting the no. house more house there. The, the house is not going to go any farther towards any of the proper lines. It will just come forward to enclose that. Way up to where the railing is. Right to where the railing is. And that is what these dimensions are here. That's what those dimensions are there. So that'd be a two point five percent change in the actual lot coverage. Um, I'm trying to keep it as minimum as possible. I, it, I'm trying to bring other things up in the house to code. Um, 
but again, I'm trying to make it. My thing is I would like to rent this for about four or five years to get my cost back out of uh, doing the updates. The reason why I bought this house was there was drugs being sold out of it. And I own the rental unit next to it and got tired of that. And when it came up for back taxes, I purchased a house. Now I'm trying to get to a point where I can sell the house, modernize it, redo the siding, the windows, and update it and put it back on the market. But I'd like to get a little bit of my cost out of that before I do that. You, you realize that the building inspector will not let you just enclose that porch. I have to foundation. put a foundation in whole nine yards. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, so I understand that. We actually, I had Tony out there a month ago over um, where there's a window, there's a bedroom upstairs that does not have an aggressible window. And we were able to come up, I was able to come up with a way to get an aggressible window in there, but there was a little, little thing I had to clarify with Tony to make sure that was, that was good. And we did that when we were all set there. Um, it's been a long process going through and doing all this. Um, I know this is a small uh, and it's non-conforming, but this is on a boulevard. That boulevard is 20 foot wide. Standard is 10 to seven on Maple. I think it's seven foot between the sidewalk and the street. This is 20 foot. So keeping open spaces and so forth, it does have a ton of open space in the front yard. Um, if you would just put this at a common sidewalk distance from the curb, which is 10 foot, that would add 400 square feet, which would put me right on the edge of compliance. It would put the house on compliance right now with adding 2.5 to it, it would only put it over by 1% um, as far as that 30% margin on that. So in, the other thing is, this is in the older part of the neighborhoods, um, the older part of the town when I have pictures of this on a map from 1876, three buildings just like that on that same area. So back then zoning, I'm curious to see just out of curiosity, exactly when the zoning laws went into effect, um, just in a city in general, just that's one thing I have not been able to find out in all my research on this whole thing. So that was kind of a curious thing, but that does affect things. The other thing in this whole thing that I've came up with is these lots from front um, or from Finch back to the back of front, or it's kind of confusing. Um, so where, say where that church is, where it says St. Lutheran School, that lot line between 12 and 14 that goes all the way to the back is uh, 130 square, 130 feet. The, on my 242 Finch building, there is, they didn't meet 88.5 feet instead of 90 feet. And then they did it 40 feet on 612 which leaves a foot and a half of still deeded property. And we figured this out and talked to the assessor about it and talked to um, the title company. There's a foot and a half that are still, it, it still belongs to the actual Lutheran ch church. Um, and I'm willing to proceed to try to get that property in my name and add that to the front street property, which that foot and a half by 49.5 turns out to be 75 square feet, which would offset the amount that I'm trying to add on or enclose on Finch or Front Street on 612. So it's, there is that little nugget of information would offset anything, any negative that I would be adding to this. It actually would add a little bit of a positive to it. The, the other thing I've tried to do in this whole process is I've tried to buy part of that property back from the church um that was a process of about four months last year waiting for them to hear back from them they decided against it at this point in time but then they're going back for another meeting this month where they're having a discussion about all their properties because they have low attendance at that church so that may be a possibility again it's something that i have a standing offer to them to buy 
20 feet back and about three quarters of the way across. Um, so I've tried to do a lot of things to try to conform to what I possibly can without stretching it farther than I have to. Uh, commissioners, questions? We have anyone in the audience to speak on this? If you'd like to come up to the podium, please give us your name. And My name is Mike Donahue. I live right around the corner at 214 Finch Street. Thank you. Uh, I have actually one question and one comment. Am I to understand that the home won't take up any more space than what it does now? He's talking about enclosing the front porch. Is that correct? That's my understanding, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I personally don't have any problem with that, but one thing I would like if if this proceeds, if everything gets okayed. I mean, we we live in one of the, well, I take it back, the oldest part of Adrian. And one thing I've always had a problem with is when homes are redone like this, it looks like it was redone. Now, I worked with uh, Habitat from Human uh, uh, for Humanity on a home that we did over on Elm Street. And uh, they brought a home that was right across from Siena Heights, and they put it on this property that St. Joseph Church, my church, donated to them. And there was one uh, uh, thing that they wanted them to do, and they said that we want it to fit into the area. And what we ended up doing was putting a front porch on the house that kind of fit. I mean, older homes, you didn't have air conditioning. So you had a front porch and you could sit down on it. If this is done, I would like to see to where the work that is on the outside of the house fits. Uh, you said 1908, is that right? 16. 1916. 1916. Oh, uh, yeah, I would like to see it look like a home from that really area. Bring the front porch out even with the house um, in the front. I also have got some water issues with the roof going off. And that front porch would mm -hmm. actually extend that away from the house itself and the foundation. Um, that would be an additional four foot for the porch, but that would be still be open. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I think with you in the neighborhood, everybody's got a front porch. Oh yeah, yeah. And mine is my home is kind of one of the newer ones in the area. It was built in the eighteen sixties. Okay, but I tried to keep it look okay. the way that it is original, and that's, you know, like I said, if this proceeds, okay, I'd like to see it not as a, a rental that's tacking on a, a window here and there. I would like to make it look like. The home that it originally is. There's Thank you. Great. Thank you. Anyone else to speak? We have anyone online? I know we have some people logged in. Anyone online wish to speak? Okay. Commissioners? I want to throw something out, I guess, whether I'm appropriate or not appropriate, I'm going to throw it out anyway. <laughs> I'm wondering whether this item should be chaired or should be uh, tabled. And the reason I'm saying that is because he's talking about some other options that are available that would require us not to have to deal with the square footage coverage, with the lot coverage. Now, enclosing a porch is something we've, we've steered away from forever. You know, and uh, but I mean, I do understand his concerns. My thinking would be that if if some of these options that he's talking about, purchasing land or some of the other things like that, come up, the lot coverage doesn't come into play. We're not granting any type of a variance for enclosure and porch, which we really haven't done. 
and his building, if he does want to do all this, would have to meet obviously all the buildings plans and situations and stuff. So I don't know, Greg, am I out of line with my thinking or? Well, I, well, I would just say that, uh, I mean, I think you're thinking about it the right way, but I don't know that tabling is necessarily the, the solution. I mean, I mean, if there are options that would allow for um, the work to be done in a conforming manner, then, you know, then a variance isn't needed, right? right? And so really the but, thing to do is probably deny the variance and- uh, But also you know, I'm thinking that those if, options. if this comes, if, uh, is brought up and if it's denied, and his options don't go through, then it can't come back to us because nothing's changed. I think it's a, is it a year, Jeremy? Yeah. It can't come back. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so it gives them a year to try to figure that out. Um, you know, obviously staff's review was that we didn't think the variance should be granted. It's, right. it's uh, both self-created and an economic hardship. Um, at, <laughs> sir, you're out of order. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it might behoove you to go through that analysis, but uh, in any event, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the board can do what it what it wants to do with that, obviously. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think if there are solutions, the even even more so than uh, what was indicated in our report, that that uh, argues for there not being a, a hardship to justify. Well, that. that's. Kind of what I know we always kind of look at variance as a last resort. And in hearing what I'm hearing, this doesn't appear to be the last resort, but I'm well, I'm I'm kind of with with Chairperson Berthold here in that, you know, if if the gentleman, if the owner wanted to enclose what is currently the front porch to expand the interior of the house and to add a new open porch to the front of the house in the manner that the neighbor described. Uh, in a you know in a traditional open front porch and paint the house. Uh, that's, and that's that's in a plan. That, that, it, that you know, I don't think a variance would necessarily be necessary. Um, if I could jump in, so you can't have a porch go past fifteen feet from the sidewalk, so it can't approach farther than that. So he doesn't have the space to necessarily put a, a front porch on this house. A a open front porch can encroach into the setback. It's the enclosed yes. front porch that cannot. It's you, but it's twenty five feet, so they can extend up to fifteen feet. He has very very little footage. He, he wouldn't be able. What I'm getting is he wouldn't be able to put a front porch oh, on there according okay. to the to the zoning okay. ordinance. Okay, but um, even by not coming out past the front of the house, past past here, yeah. As as it relates to the front, I think, and we just looked at this today on another matter. I think that the that a un unroofed porch on the front can't go within fifteen feet of the front property line. If I even if the front of the house is already that close, yeah, 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 well, even, even yeah. so, yeah, they they would require a variance for that, which Habitat House, I believe, he was discussing. Did. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Jeremy, can I make one point? Once again, this is not a self-imposed. I did not do anything in splitting. This was all split prior to me. So I don't know why this is self-imposed on saying that I self-imposed it on myself. I did not. These All these splits were done before I owned the properties. I, th I thought you told us that you own property adjacent to it and that you also sold some property to the church. Is that not what you testified? But I did not own these properties together at the same time. And I did not own the church at any point in time. Did you divide land from this parcel? No. The parcel that was did land was divided. Do you own land adjacent to this parcel? Yes, I do. Then why can't you add land from that parcel? To this That's parcel? two for two, Finch, where we're already tight. We're already, if I own land, it would, I would have already done that years ago. And who, who sold? Because when we talked many, many times in City Hall, you indicated that once. you had sold land to the church. The church, correct. The driveway and then the backyard of that portion where if you look at the- it Was that land contiguous to this parcel? 
It was, but at the time I did not own 612 front. That was 10 years prior to me owning 612 front. I've owned the property for 20 years now. For 242 Finch. Okay. Well, I mean, be that as it may, that doesn't change the economic nature of the argument, but it just presents it in a different light, though, because just <laughs> I did not impose it on myself. And I'm just trying to I'm trying to follow the ordinance as much as I possibly can. And again, being an older part of town, what do you, you know, what are our options to make this this house? a better part of town, just in part of the community itself. How do we upgrade the community in these parts of town where we face these challenges? Well, pa with, painting it would help. <laughs> my plan was actually, if it would have been, believe me, there's lots of issues and it's, this would have been resolved a, a years ago. My water line was actually bought, uh, broken back in 2016 on this particular property by the city. And that still hasn't, gotten resolved so, so there there is a violation from 622 2020 which is excessive paint peeling and exposed wood and site. i never i never received that until i read this online this the other night. property maintenance enforcement en 200203 but i never received the violation regardless their their paint has been peeling and in the, the I images understand. that you supplied i understand but at the same time i was never Issued a, a, a I mean, citation. One could where, economically say that if you painted that house, it would sell more than the enclosing of the porch. But yeah, in in the in the building, let's, in wrap, the, let's wrap this up. I like to get back okay. to what we're in, dealing with. In the, in the building, in in redoing this whole thing, if I'm going to enclose the front porch, I'm going to add siding. Actually, I wanted to side the house, put new windows and so whole nine yards. I talked to actually building, previous building inspector about this, and then Tony came on board. Go with the whole nine yards. This was going to be totally, and even uh, Pearson and me have many conversations about this particular building. This was going to be sided new windows, whole nine yards. The district wasn't just going to be painted. This was going to be totally remodeled from the outside and in. So this is a portion of when you're doing your building, you want to take care of any add-ons before you take and do your siding, soffit, fascia work. That's what we that's will let you about. work that out with them. Okay. <laughs> We need to deal with what we're dealing with here. All right, appreciate it. Commissioners, comments? Is your mic on? I mean, I'm already in trouble hearing you there. Um, <laughs> how far is it from the sidewalk to the front of the house? Does anybody have that number? Off the top of my head, we're gonna be in that 12 foot to 15 foot. I've measured that because of, um, I measured it because of the water line. Um, in in the top of my head, I'm I'm twelve foot is sticking in my head. Okay, thanks. So according to the map online here, eleven point five five feet. Thank you. Other commissioners, questions, comments. I have a comment. I realize that we have very strict rules that we adhere to, but what I'm hearing here is that. We have a house on the in the older part of town that needs some love. And it seems to me this gentleman wants to give us some love and we're splitting some hairs here. And if we don't allow him to make these improvements, is the house gonna get any better? I agree, it needs paint. Um, so, um, in granting him what he wants to do, maybe you make it contingent with painting the house. But to me, I just don't see where the house in the neighborhood is gonna benefit if we don't allow him to make it better. And I realize that we're splitting hairs here. I'm, you know, I hear everybody talking about, you know, two feet here or one foot there. And, to me, it seems like he's he's in a a very delicate situation, and so and I don't know the history of you know conversations that anybody at City Hall has had here, but it just seems to me that um, if we don't allow him to move forward, the property is going to just continue to decline, and that means the neighborhood declines. So. 
Well, the one thing we're really looking at here is lot coverage. And it's non-conforming already. And by grain, it becomes more non-conforming. <laughs> but I think he explained, at least in my mind, he explained why it's non-conforming. Mm -hmm. And all of that happened a long time ago. And I'm sure that there are probably other pieces of property somewhere within the city that are sort of the same situation. Well, and it, while it is an expansion of the living space, the lot coverage, I, I realize that when we're measuring lot coverage, we usually don't count porches. But this is pretty tiny. And I, I tend to agree with, with Commissioner Strayer's if, comment. If you fix up the house, you can you can rent it for more and you can also hopefully bring a better tenant in there than what was in there before. Right. Anyone else? This end of the table? You know, I always think it's fine if someone wants to close in their porch, no. but I've been on this board for 20 years and we have never said yes. But those those have been porches that extend into the setback. Yeah. I guess the other possible thing that I'm trying to think of whether this is enclosed in porches, just putting an addition onto the house. Right. Yes. Well, it is. It, it is. It's an addition. Yes, it is. It I takes up, it. you know, takes up the space. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's not it's not just taking what's there and closing it in. No, you're putting the foundation. You're putting foundation and doing the whole thing. So yep. it's actually an addition to the house. Yes. So, yes, sir, gentlemen, last comment. Yeah, last comment. <laughs> um, when we moved into our house, a lot of the home was original. And we changed the, uh, the footprint of a lot of the inside of the house and that just to make it, well, as I called it, gracefully bringing it into the 21st century. And I believe, especially with a home being as small as this is, you need something like this. It's a, originally a small home like this, you know, would hold a family. Not anymore. They want all kinds of room. If you keep the house small like this, what are you going to get? You're going to get a couple, you know, that maybe moves into this. And by, quote unquote, gracefully bringing this into the 21st century, we may have another family in the neighborhood. And that'd be nice. Thank you. Okay, one of the things we have to do, Mike. I have a Mike. Oh, yes, sir. Voice from the sky. Okay. This is from? this yeah. is procedure. It's not anything more than that. If we table it, and some of the questions are answered that have been raised, when can it? What do we gain by having a tabled uh, request? Time to resolve some of these issues. It, is it in the benefit of the owner? To table it so that it so that a positive result could re, could be voted on. I guess that's my question. My thinking is, and I could be wrong. My thinking is, if this request is denied, it cannot come back to us again for another whole year. By tabling it a month from now, two months from now, whatever, he purchases this property. He has a possibility of purchasing uh, whatever. Then the lot coverage does not become an issue. And we don't need a variance. So that's my thinking of, of doing it that way. Um, if he, you know, two months from now, three months from now, doesn't get this and says, I've tried to purchase these properties, I can't, we can bring it back up to look at a variance for lot coverage at that time. Thank you. I would be in support of the table. Could. One of the gentlemen from the city speak about the reasons there are lot coverage ordinances. Is it safety? Is it what? It's intensity of use. I mean, it's it's meant to allow for you know some amount of open space around structures, and uh, you know, and, and and as you're looking at a variance request, I mean, you're looking at, at is there something unique about this parcel so that it should be treated specially whereas other parcels are not. And so, you know, Jeremy applies the rules regarding lot coverage to every other parcel uh, in the city. If they exceed that coverage, they can't add on to their 
home in this case. The argument is, well, it's an extremely small home, therefore, uh, you know, would it be beneficial uh, to the city in general to for the home to be a bit larger than it is now? I mean, you, and I think you have to consider, you know, is an additional 50 square feet or whatever it is going to change the character of this home? It's a 700 square foot home. In many communities, you, that would be a non-conforming home. We We happen to kind of oddly define the minimum size of a house in this particular zoning district is 600, whereas other zoning districts we require a minimum size house that's larger than that. And so, um, you know, it, it, I I don't think to the to the gentleman who lives next door's comments, you're really going to find somebody different who wants to live in the house because it's 50 square feet bigger. Uh, it's still a 700 and some square foot house. It's much below the standard in the market uh, either way. But to answer your direct question, it's to allow for a, a modicum of open space around houses. We don't have lot coverage ratios in every zoning district, but we have them in single family zoning districts for that reason. And what I hear you saying is it's not safety, it's aesthetics. It's not aesthetics, it's quality of life. I mean, I think that's different than aesthetics everybody in. To, to keep you from being too close to your neighbor from, you know, you, you can create a situation. I remember looking at a house I was considering purchasing, you know, when, when you have gentrification occurring in areas of a city, I was looking at a house in Ann Arbor one time and the, the house on the lot that I was looking at was the original house that had been built there, but the house next door had been doubled in size and because of the bulk of that house it, it 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 created an unpleasant situation for the property i was looking at it kind of uh, loomed over it and made that lot uh, unappealing because of that and that's what can happen if you overbuild on a lot you can impact the neighboring properties by uh, creating a bulk situation that is uh can be burdensome on neighboring properties. So although someone may not buy the house because it's this tiny amount larger, this tiny amount might not also have much effect on the quality of life of the neighbors because of intensity. I mean, it's, it's small, no matter how you look at it. It's going toward the street, obviously. Yeah. The you know, it's not going closer to one of the neighbors and the neighbors in this case, uh, at least a couple of them are institutional uses. They're not single family uses. On the other hand, uh, the one neighbor we've heard from has commented on uh, his desire to maintain the aesthetic of the way the home was built. And if it's not, if an addition's not done the right way, right. Um, you know, then that will, it, it, it will end up being even less in character with the neighborhood than it is now. Okay. One of the things we have. Right. One of the things we have to do to grant any variance is go through some finding of fact. And uh, I know we have some notes here uh, from the city. I'm not sure, based on what I'm hearing tonight, that all these actual notes are actually correct. So let's work our way through these. What? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll need some uh, discussion on each of these, please. One, uh, and by the way, we need to uh, uh, say yes on all of these before we can even consider grain of variance. One, that there are practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships which are carrying out the strict letter of this ordinance. These hardships or difficulties shall not be deemed economic, but shall be evaluated in terms of the use of a, a particular parcel of land. In the past, we have granted variances on the basis of, gee, this lot is, the, the nature of this lot is that it's unusually small or restrictively small. Um, we've usually, predicated that on the basis that it was not the fault, it, that it was not the fault of the landowner. 
the landowner has argued that has, has argued that uh, you know that he acquired this property at its current size. Whether that's technically correct or not, I don't know. But that's just a little background that in the past we have we have approved yeah, variances absolutely. on uh, saying this is a really small lot. They should they're deserving of some variance because mm -hmm. their lot is really yep. small and that's not their fault. Yep, we have so. many times done that. So we have find yes for number one. Yes, please. Okay. Number two, the genuine hardship exists because of unique circumstances or physical conditions, such as narrowness, shallowness, shallowness, shape, topography of the property involved, or the intended use of the property do not generally apply to other property uses in the same zoning district and shall not be recurrent in nature. The same. Really, what the pretty much what you're saying on for number applies, one would apply for number yes. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find yes for number two. Number three, that the hardship or special conditions or circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. Now, there was uh, this property was not split up by the applicant, from what I understand now. My understanding. So his actions did not make it uh, the size that it is. So I would find yes for number three. Number four, that the variance will be in harmony with general purpose or the intent of this ordinance and shall not cause any uh, substantial adverse effect upon surrounding property, property values, and the use and enjoyment of property in the neighborhood or district. I would say the word substantial is the important word in there. If we're looking at this, we're saying it's not big enough. It is, it is indeed exacerbating and existing nonconformity, but not substantially. It's pretty small. <laughs> and it's not changing the footprint of the house. And it's not changing the footprint of the house. That's how I would find in the affirmative for that okay. one. I yes, for number four. Number five, the grain of this variance will not confer the applicant any special privileges as denied by this ordinance to other lands, structures, or buildings in the same district. Again, the, it's it's the same argument we've had in previous discussions uh, about lot coverage or setbacks, uh, where we said, "Gee, this is a extraordinarily small lot, not mm -hmm. necessarily the fault of the property owner." Um, and if we talked to someone else in similar circumstances, we would consider a variance for them as well. Mm -hmm. And the grant of variance will not confer the any special privileges and that's denied by the ordinance because anyone else would also have the opportunity to apply for the same type of variance if they had a similar situation. That's pretty much what we say to question yeah. five, no matter what the <laughs> issue is. The standard answer for question five. I think so. Question six, the variance request is the minimum amount necessary to overcome the inadequate in, me, inequality inherent in the particular property or mitigate the hardship. This one's harder. Well, I would say it's probably, you know, the minimum trying to get what we're trying to get to because he's not coming out past the front of the house. Um, he's not going sideways or backwards. Right. Uh, the question, what you know, I guess we can question the hardship part of it, but... I guess there's that there's going to be a hardship in any variance request. That's why people are requesting variances. <laughs> so I would say that this is the minimum amount necessary. Mm -hmm. Any objections on that? Okay. Yes for number six. Number seven, the variance shall not permit the establishment within a district or any use which is not permitted by right within the zoning district or any use by which a special use permit or temporary use permit is required. Uh, this is not a use variant, so number seven does not fall in. So we'll say yes for number seven. Based on the finding of fact, we can proceed with uh, a motion. But yeah, go ahead. Um, with the nature that there is a open violation, what? If, if you are going to proceed with it, what we'd recommend is that you condition it that he paints the home first. 
obviously that sounds weird, no. but the enclosure portion is not part of what needs to be painted at this point. If I were to make a motion, that would be part of it. Yes. yes in fact, in fact, I would move based on the findings of fact to approve the request for a variance for lot coverage. You can make that. To approve the request for a variance for lot coverage contingent upon the fact, uh, contingent upon the property owner satisfying the outstanding code violation. By a certain time? Before he does the, before he does completes the addition. Okay. We have a motion and we have support. Support. Okay. Questions on the motion? No questions on the motion. We have a motion. We have support. We have no questions. Therefore, we will take a roll call vote. Koleski? Yes. Strayer? Yes. Jacobitz? Yes. Berthold? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. So you have your variance based on the condition that was presented in the motion. I'm sure you'll work that out with the with the city. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Those of the audience, sorry that took so long, but we had a lot to work through there. <laughs> Could I ask a question? Yes. Does our code allow for tiny houses or any of the new fangled little bitty things? The other day is kind of passed anyway, but no, we don't have any. We do not. Although, uh, as I mentioned, the, the minimum size of a house in this particular zoning district at 600 is smaller than most communities would allow. Yes, I just wondered how the tiny house movement fit into that in places where they are allowed we get because they can be smaller than six we get requests for a lot but the way that the article 24 reads is there's certain sizes and most people are asking for three or four hundred square feet and they can't meet so okay. hundred obviously so so we do not allow that in our that and chickens, tiny houses and chickens <laughs> okay no, 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 let's not bring up chickens okay Next item on our agenda is for 1257 East Siena Heights Drive for a dimensional variance. We have someone to speak on that. Step up, give us your name and tell us what you're asking for. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Joel Hendricks. I'm the facilities director for the Adrian Dominican Sisters. We currently have a seven acre parcel that we have fenced off that we have gardens inside. Gardens trees, just a fenced in area to try to keep the deer away. At least that was the original thought. Unfortunately, that that fence is not adequate. The deer are getting over top of the fence. Um, you know, part of it is they, they are eating, they're ramsacking everything within the garden. And then they're also injuring themselves once they get inside. Best case scenario last year, we had, uh, I wrote it in the letter, we had a 10 point buck jumped over the fence, tried to get back out, forgot how he got in and he just kept jumping against the fence until he finally we were able to crawl him out and it's <laughs> it's a process to get the deer out of this seven acres because seven acres is a pretty good chunk of land trying to get the deer corralled out of this fence he ended up injuring himself so bad on the fence that he later died just shortly off on the edge of our property um every year we also have does that can get over the fence because it's it's right there and they can get over it and then they fall over the top so they get in, they have their fawns inside. And then again, we have to get a wall of people to try to walk and, and corral these deer out of there. They're scared, they're jumping around, they're jumping against the fence and it's traumatic for everyone involved, the deer, us, everyone. So we're asking for a variance to go to a 10 foot fence. It's a, it's a nice looking fence. It's black vinyl coated PVC uh, chain link fence and it has a top top rail so they're not going to be able to get up over it so the entire process has nothing to do with aesthetics we're just trying to keep the deer out of this area and let them be in their area and kind of let this let this area be so that's kind of the crux of it okay like the like that version of it. uh i do have a couple uh, just a comment and a couple obviously the fence has been started already that's correct okay and that is a 10 foot fence. Huh? When I looked at it from the road, it looked like it was like an eight foot fence, but that's a 10 foot fence. The black one? Yeah. It is 10 foot. Huh. It, it, yeah, it's 10. And my understanding is it's going to go all the way down around the north end and all the way back up on the west side and every that whole big area. That whole big area. Okay. That is correct. <laughs> Commissioners, questions? 
Are you going to be back here when they learn how to clear that one? Yeah. I pray to God that that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, they're. I, we've tried everything from deer away to like so many non-traditional methods to keep deer away, and there's just too many goodies inside that garden. A couple dogs. Yeah, I've. There's, there's currently no fence on the north end, is there? Yeah. Oh, is there a map? I must have not seen it back in through the. <laughs> yeah, no, it, the, the fence completely encircles it right now with gates. And, and the gates, again, are going to be okay. doubled up gates. So they won't be able to get over the okay. gates as well. Do we have anyone in the audience to speak on this? No. Do we have anybody online who would like to speak on this? Okay. So, commissioners, back to us. Do you have any more questions, comments? What? Sure. I did get a call from a, a neighbor about the weeds. So, you know, the weeds outside of the fence would have to, you know, remain mowed. I'm, I'm not sure if they were that way when I went there, but I, I'm just saying as citizen correspondents, I did get a complaint about that. Just as I have to tell, as I have to tell that. That might've been more in the north of the, on the east side to part of the north, but I didn't notice anything in the park. Oh, I, did, I didn't notice anything there, yeah, but. Okay. They may have cut it down. I mean, I saw a little bit, but they probably cut it down. Maybe you're just in between mowings. I'm I, not sure. I, I can say that the, the the part of the property that's adjacent to Hall Highway, we keep that mowed all the way along the fence. The north end, um, the, it's it's on the edge of some berms and swales to control the the flow of stormwater throughout the property. We don't mow that. That's kind of grown up like the rest of the property, but you can't see that from the road. Um, there's trees, uh, including the view. So. Not, not sure I would agree with that one, but that's okay. <laughs> if there are no other questions, we can proceed down through our finding of fact. <sighs> this will be a little, little repetitive that we just went through. Number one, practical difficulties, unnecessary hardships will prevent carrying out the strict. Oh, first of all, I should back up. The variances for the 10 foot fence and the ordinance right now allows for a six foot fence. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, just wanna make sure what we're all dealing with here. That there are practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships would prevent carrying out the strict letter of this ordinance. These hardships or difficulties should not be deemed economic, but shall be evaluated in terms of use of the parcel of land. Um, this is certainly not an economic issue. Uh, they are trying to you know, save their organic farming that they have and keep the deer out, so. I will find yes for number one. Number two, that the genuine hardship exists because of the unique circumstances of physical condition, such as narrowness, shallowness, shape, topography of the property involved, or to the intended use of the property that do not generally apply to other properties used in the same zoning district and shall not be recurrent in nature. Um, I think with the use of the property, I don't know if that quite falls into this use property. It's, it's, it could. Yeah. It's probably the only large organic garden in an ERO district in <laughs> yeah. the city. So yeah. It is unique. Yeah. But if the neighbor just outside the ERO wants the deer out of their yard, are we going to let them have it too? They would have the right to come and ask for a variance. Okay. Yeah. So I would find yes for two. Number three. The hardship or special conditions or circumstances excuse me, do not result from actions of the applicant. Um, <laughs> I like the note we have here. They cannot control the movement of the deer. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll find yes for number three. Number four, that the variance shall be in harmony with general purpose, intent of this ordinance, and will not confer the uh, not cause substantial adverse effect upon surrounding property, property values, use of enjoyment of the property in the neighborhood or district. Um, I think it would actually enhance the value. The new fence looks a lot nicer than the old fence looks. So I would find yes for number four. Number five, the grain of variance will not confer the, uh, excuse me, da, 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 da. the application special purpose does deny the ordinance of other, of other land structures or buildings in the same district. Uh, once again, others are allowed the six foot, but everyone has the option of coming and asking for a variance for 
their garden if they have deer jumping in it. So I would find yes for number uh, five. Number six. Okay, go ahead. Okay, number six, at the variance requested, is a minimum amount necessary to overcome the inequality inherent in partial or to migrate the hardship? Uh, <clears throat> I think from what we're being told in our application, they have tried other solutions that have not worked at the six foot level. So the 10 foot level will be the minimum that they need to solve their problem as opposed to a 12 foot level or 14 foot level or whatever. So I would find yes for number six. And number seven, the variance shall uh, not permit the establishment use within a district or any use which is not permitted by right within the zoning district or any use for which a special use permit or temporary use permit is required. Once again, it is a uh, it is not a use variant. So number seven would be a yes also. Based on finding the fact, we could entertain a motion or answer any other questions any commissioners have. I'm just Googling how high over a fence a deer can jump. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I would entertain a motion if there are no other questions. Based on the finding of fact and the affirmative, I would move for approval of the variance and adoption of the uh, motion that is provided by staff. I'll support that. We have a motion and we have support for the motion. Do we have any questions on the motion? Therefore, roll call vote. Yes, sir. Strayer? Yeah. Jacobitz? Yes. Berthold? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. You have your fence. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, old business, not new. Okay. Uh, public comment. Any questions or any comments from the public before we bring this to an end? Anybody online questions? All right, hearing none, meeting is adjourned. Planning Commission will begin in a few moments. Good morning in progress. My apologies for the delay in the start of our meeting, but we are about to get ready and we will call to order the regular October meeting of the City of Adrian Planning Commission. First item on our agenda is waiting for Jeremiah to get back from back. I, I can do okay, the roll call. Okay, first item on our agenda is roll call. Mr. Elliott, if you don't mind. Uh, Chair Jacobitz. Yes. Commissioner Love. Present. Commissioner Weatherby. Not here. Is absent. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Watson is absent. Yep. Commissioner Taylor. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Present. All uh, we have a quorum, uh, commissioners uh, Watson and Weatherby are absent. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is consideration of the minutes from our September 13 meeting. Commissioners, I presume you have, I know you have copies of those, and I presume you've had an opportunity to review them. Are there any additions or corrections to the September minutes? If there are none, we would entertain a motion for their approval. Move approval is written. Support. We have a motion from Taylor with support from Love. All those in favor of approval of the minutes, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? September minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda is case number 2226, a uh, zoning exception and site plan review for 403 West Baum E Street. Is there someone here to address that particular matter? Is there someone here representing this case. I think I see the applicant online, Mr. Chair. Um, Somebody online, perhaps. My name is Kasim Ali. I'm uh, representing uh, Safedine Oil Company. Okay, uh, Mr. Ali, if you would, uh, we we have before us uh, the copy of the site plan. Um, if you would very briefly give us a thumbnail sketch of what it is you're proposing to do uh, on the property at 403 West Maumee Street. Yes, sir. Well, we're proposing to rehabilitate that corner 
I know it has been uh, uh, an ISO for quite some time, and we want to apologize in advance for that. But uh, our plan is to rehabilitate that corner with a brand new uh, convenience store um, from the ground up uh, and, and fueling, fueling uh, gas station. Um, we do own a number of gas stations in, in Southeast Michigan. We actually do have another station in Adrian as well. Um, and we intend on um, making the station something that hopefully uh, the city of Adrian can be proud of. Um, our goal is to uh, have this open sometime next year. Um, and uh, assuming that we meet all the conditions, we, we are uh, really uh, excited about moving forward. Hey, um, out of curiosity, where is your other station in town? Uh, it's at Mommy. It's actually a lease location. I don't have the exact address. It's a, it's a mobile station. Um, I'm uh, fairly new to the company. Uh, we, we, do have, we do have other locations in Southeast Michigan, actually 14 locations in Southeast Michigan. Yeah, including, including. Okay, uh, I think the only mobile station I know of in town is on South Main Street, perhaps. But, yes. Okay, it was just a curiosity. Thank you. Yep. Commissioner, commissioners, questions for the app. There's a proposed drive-through. What do you expect to be passing through that drive-through? Um. As far as what the what the type of food is, like yeah, what, can what someone just order anything in the convenience store or? Is our there our be a intent is yes, sir. Our our intent is to have a uh, primarily a uh, coffee uh, kiosk type operation there, where we can primarily uh, serve coffee and you know donuts and things like that out of that drive. -thru. Other questions from the commission or the applicant? I have a couple. <clears throat> um, the um, location of the tanks, those aren't identified on the, on the site plan. Are those the series of six symbols on the east side of the property? Yes. Where the fill ports are and the- Right. Measuring yes, ports. Um, and then where, where are the, uh, where's the venting going to be located on the property? Well, we, we, I don't have that exact location, but I mean, I, you know, obviously we want to um, vent it where it's in this area and uh, one that is, you know, not susceptible to any type of damage. Right. That's why I was curious if it was, next to the dumpster pad where it's going to hit every other time the dumpster gets changed out or yeah well i mean we, we have some experience in that type of thing so believe me okay <laughs> we don't want that to happen okay either. and then you're either in the process or you've secured your lara or egle permitting yes for the tanks yes. underground storage tanks yep and yes, then did they, did they have you gotten the plan review back on that no we have not yet okay um, my concern was, or something to think about is the proximity of the river and the underground storage tanks. So <clears throat> I just have experience with, uh, a fuel center that we just did in, in, uh, Grand Blanc for Kroger and EGLE hit them pretty hard because their tanks were within 300 feet of a, a well or a water source. So just something to look out for. And it looked like it appeared that if those are the locations of the tanks, you're less than 200 feet, so. Well, I, I, obviously our intent is, is to make sure that they're used safely. And um, I mean, the last thing we want obviously is to endanger public, public, uh, public uh, waterways or drinking water. Right, no, understood. I just wanted to put it out there. Yes, sir, appreciate, appreciate the input. That's all I have. Okay. Other questions or comments from the commission? Jeremiah, any 
<clears throat> comments from staff in addition to what's noted in the packet. I don't think we had any, we had any uh, outstanding issues. Uh, like the applicant said, we had a, a number of reviews on this internally, so I think it's in good shape. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to address the Planning Commission on this proposal for a gas station at the corner of Maumee and uh, Church? Anybody online? Okay, staff has reviewed this uh, proposal a number of times, and there are no, to the best of my knowledge, there are no contingencies. Um, but and I, there's no con contingencies, but they don't, they, the staff talks about the signage is not, you know, really spelled out. Signage so. is not spelled out, but it does say that uh, uh, they, they have yeah, said so. they will, they will comply with the sign ordinance when they do install a sign. So I think probably we're good there. So. Okay. Okay. They'll still have to pull a permit. They'll still have to get a sign. Okay. Regard. So yeah. So just come. just so just so we're clear that yeah, approval of the site plan does not include approval of the signage, and that will be a separate separate under, uh, permit process. Yes, sir. Under, and they do under, have uh, signage. Yeah, understood. Building mounted. Signage. Okay. They do have building mounted signage. And and also a and on a freestanding uh, sign on the too. canopy. On yep. the canopy shroud. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, the site plan approval does not uh, include a, uh, signage approval, and that's a separate permitting process. So just so we're clear on that. Yes, understood. Any other comments? Like I said, staff has reviewed this, and there, I uh, has not pointed out any contingencies. If we so chose, uh, the planning commission could approve both the uh, uh, zoning exception permit for a gas station and the presented site plan, we would entertain a motion for adoption of the resolution that staff has provided. I move to approve the resolution provided by staff. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Love with support from Commissioner Taylor. Commissioners, is there any additional discussion? I would simply say this is gonna be a great improvement to that corner. Thank You're you. here. You're here. Yeah. Ditto. Yes, sir. As someone who walks by this area almost daily, <laughs> uh, I'm thrilled. But, yes. Okay, uh, roll call vote, please. Love, yes. Johnson, support. Jacobitz, yes. Taylor, yes. Roberts, yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Next item. Oh, thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is consideration of case 2237, uh, the Warehouse District Ordinance Amendment. As you all may recall from our prior meeting, um, it was our intention based on our comprehensive plan uh, to eliminate the warehouse district and wholesale districts and uh, change them to light industrial districts and rezone properties that are currently in those districts to the industrial district. The language has been provided for you that would change that ordinance. This will be in the form of a recommendation to the city commission. <clears throat> Commissioners, any discussion on that? We've, we've talked about this the last two meetings, I believe. So probably minimal discussion, I would think, since it's already been discussed. Yeah, Mr. Chair, we've already, yes. just as a reminder, we've already effectuated the changes needed to the uh, uh, I-2 district to provide for so, some of the uses that had only been in the warehouse district, mm -hmm. and that got first reading by city commission last night. And likewise, of uh, move forward the rezoning of the only parcels that were zoned warehouse to I-1 mm -hmm. district, and that also got first reading by city commission last night. Okay. I move to approve the resolution. To support for that motion. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the planning commission on this proposed recommendation to the city commission for change in the zoning ordinance? Okay, we have a motion and support for adoption of this recommendation. If there is no additional discussion, a roll call vote, please. Roberts? Yes. Love? Yes. Johnson? Sport? Taylor? Yes. Jacobitz? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, under old business, case 2235, definition of daycare. 
uh, as you may recall from our prior discussions, the state has changed their definition of what uh, constitutes family daycare homes and group daycare homes, and it's a matter of the number of children being served in each of them. And we are proposing to the city commission that our ordinance be changed to comply and be consistent with the same definitions that the state uses. Any questions or discussion on that? I think that's helped clean it up for the future so that we don't have to keep revisiting this. And I thank you yeah. after that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the planning commission on this particular proposal? I just suggest that we add the word uh, in the additional language there. The amount of children shall be as provided for under MCL 125.3206. Well, and thank you for that, because I would also suggest that the word amount be, the, be changed to number. <laughs> That's probably a good call also. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so any place in red where it says amount, please change that word to number. And, and Greg, your suggestion was... Yeah, as provided. As provided. As pro shall be as provided. Okay, and the word as be added after shall be. Yes. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Okay. Jeremy, that, that's okay? Got that? Okay. Any other discussion on that? Anybody in the audience that wishes to address the Planning Commission on this matter? Hearing no additional comments, we would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution to recommend this change in the ordinance to the city commission. Move to approve the resolution. Support. We have a motion and support. If there's no additional discussion, a roll call vote, please. Johnson. Support. Roberts. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Jacobitz. Yes. Love. Yes. Shabazzi Nams. Thank you. Next item under old business, case 2236, 933 West Beecher Street, a zoning exception and site plan review for in addition to a storage facility. Is there someone here to address this matter? Good evening. Hi, uh, my name's Mike Capaletti. I'm the engineer on the project. Mr. Capaletti, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. <laughs> um, since the last meeting, uh, at the last meeting, we were asked to provide a landscape drawing and a lighting plan. Uh, since then we submitted those, the landscape drawing, uh, what we did, there was much discussion at the last meeting uh, because the existing facility didn't have any landscaping. Uh, the facility is tucked away behind other businesses between, uh, uh, there are other businesses between Beecher and, and this, facility and the, the new facility. Uh, however, it does have an entrance onto Bradish. And uh, what we did is we took the 15% uh, light, uh, line item, uh, let's see, on the uh, recommendations is- uh, Number eight. Number eight. Yeah, landscaping and screening uh, A uh, four. It says something about basically the at, at a minimum, the applicant must provide landscaping in an amount to, uh, to the portion of the site proposed for development. So what we did is took 15% of the new development and then used that landscaping where we thought it would be most uh, visible. Visible, uh, you know, rather than put it, uh, we, we have the backside, which does abut uh, residential, is uh has a six foot solid fence so so there wasn't any point in putting it there the uh north side again has businesses between uh, uh beecher and the facility didn't make sense there so so we basically took all the area and used it on the uh entrance and and the bradish side so we thought that would be best for the business the, the aesthetics of the property and that's that's what we did so we took the 15 percent of that now, is that is that drive is that entrance that's to the east is that part of the parcel or is that yes it, it will be part of this it's the entrance to it there is some uh 
reconfiguring of, of the parcel to, to combine everything, but that is part of the parcel. But it, it, that hasn't been done yet. The uh, has I don't done. know, has that been done? No, it's, it's in the works, but it hasn't been done okay. yet. Mr. Chair, I'm looking at it and it is owned by the same LLC, that, that parcel. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, the owner basically owns all that property around there. So. Okay, okay. Then the lighting plan, uh, should I go on to the please, lighting plan? Please. The lighting plan, uh, uh, currently there's four consumer power poles there that, that provide, uh, I guess this is the way, I don't know if they still do that. They've been there for somewhat 20 years or so since the facility started and they're consumer uh, uh, fixtures. Uh, I went to, I have a person that, does do uh, lighting uh, uh, studies for me. However, since they're, they're the older fixtures are not LED fixtures, he couldn't come up with a uh, uh, more of a sophisticated type of a lighting plan. So what I did is I took the lighting plan, I took the fixtures that are there and took the profiles from the fixtures, overlaid them on the plan, to show basically the limits of those lights um, at that at, at those elevations at those uh, heights, and uh, uh, that was kind of the best we could do for 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 the circumstances. And there's, there's there's no new lights proposed either on the buildings or pole lights. Um, those are the only lights, and uh, the owner. Is that to, good practice? There not to be any lighting on the new additions. That boy, uh, if I want to go in there, I can, if I want to go in there in the if I want to go in there at ten o'clock at night and access my storage facility, that's going to be pretty dark back there, isn't it? They're yeah. actually closed at seven at night. Um, there's no lights currently on the buildings. It's just the it's just the pole lights. That's how it's always been. Okay. And we're not we're not proposing putting lights on the new ones. Okay. Commissioners, questions for? So to the west of the property, is, is that a fence? I'm looking at it on Google Maps. I'm trying to figure out what is the yeah, west. The west of the property is Hager Mechanical. Hager Mechanical. The, far, the farthest west. I, I understand that, but is there a fence, is there? There a fence there? Yes. And what kind of fence is it? I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Yep. What kind of what type of fence? It's a chain link, a six foot chain link fence fence. And so you'll have a fence all around your property. Yeah. A storage property. Yeah. Six foot? Uh whatever the code calls for. What's not our current one is a six foot fence. Okay. You don't need a 10 foot fence to keep the deer off. I hope not. I don't know. I, just couldn't I, resist them, so. I haven't had deer back there. I had a fox one time, but yeah, that's not a coyote, but no deer. So your business closes at 7 p.m. and no one can come in after that? After our hours? It closed, our business closes. The gates are closed at 7, at 7 p.m. And open at 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah. So they don't have access to a code. Nope. You open and close it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of key to the lighting issue. Mm. Uh, we I mean, just, we're, it's, it's usually still light at seven o'clock, I think, no matter. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, Are you it, well, this is yeah, last, been seven, working seven, for <laughs> 20 years. Last year for daylight savings time. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's supposed to be. I'm going to play the newbie card on this because you've I, been here a while i haven't yeah, been yeah. here that long <laughs> compared to the rest of you but so i guess we're looking at the zoning requirements in case things change is is how i think of it in my head so we're we're asking you to bring things up to code essentially into zoning court because we don't really know what med you know uniform is going to do or whatever this other place deal king they they could sell and something else could go in there tomorrow well not tomorrow but you understand what i mean so if if something else i know part of your argument is that right now there's just businesses in front of you and no one can see it 
right. part of our argument is that is today what's going to happen a year from now, five, 10 years from now. And we're back to the same situation that I'm hearing from you is this is how it's always been. And and that's you know, to me, that's about a landscaping? difficult You're talking about landscaping, landscaping, lighting, you know, just just how what we require, the the um the parking lot, the concrete service or whatever we're going to require. It's it's not necessarily about what's happening with your business or what happened 20 years ago or what's happening today. It's what could happen with this space and the surrounding space in the future. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I'm just, is it relevant at all in this discussion to look to the future and say what's going to happen to those buildings? I mean, we don't, we, we're dealing with this parcel and whether it meets the requirements of the, of our, of our zoning and our site plan requirements. So, and I, I guess mean, I'm just saying that part of their argument is that for not putting landscaping in the front is because there's just businesses there and no one's going to see it anyway. Mm -hmm. right? Well, I mean, that's what I remember hearing last month. So that's why you did it on the, the, north the front or the Beecher side. Street side. The Beecher, well, the Beecher Street side. To me, the front. Yeah. yeah, to me, the Beecher yeah. Street side is the front. No, you're right. But the entrance is red. The entrance is red. Yeah, the act. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm the user of this this property, I'm going to enter off radish, and I'm going. To, that's where the landscaping is going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I see that it's landscaped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think and that's the only way to get to the property now. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean so if if you play the future game, very well, somebody could be in to add on to their business in between Beecher and this property. That's probably more likely that, you know, the car lot will expand or, or, or he'll expand or something will go in the corner lot. I mean, which would isolate this even more. So, I mean, it just, you know, and typically too, the fencing, you're, you're gonna fence it for security, everything. And that leaves the landscaping would have to be inside the fence and 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 that kind of thing too. Otherwise, you know, you're fencing sure. at at this point because he already has his fencing. He'd have to move the fence and try to landscape outside the fence to get the most bang for the buck. I, I can I can see the the landscaping argument based on the nature of this property being yeah. pushed way back behind other right. other businesses as it is. I, mean, I don't know how else to do it. I mean, we. Uh, yeah. Based on staff comments, we have really three or four issues here. One is landscaping. And frankly, I think that the if, if they landscape as proposed, that that's probably about. I think they've done as good as they can with it. Given what as, they have. As we with. asked, come up with a plan they did. And I think it's right. sufficient, especially with the way they calculated based on the new, on his interpretation of the new part of the, yes. the project. And yep. Yep. Um, the other issue is is paved parking or paved driveways. Uh, many many storage facilities that I, of all of the two or three storage facilities I've ever visited, yeah, all of them, uh, none of them that I have visited have paved parking or paved paved access. But I do un yeah. also understand the issue of this being in the city, in in the city limits, and it being an issue of dust and and things like that. Uh, so I'm kind of torn there. But like I believe Mike said, your name? Yes. Mike, Mike said last time, how fast do people drive? Well, they right. go right. 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 no. so, and, well, and, and we and talk about wanting more non more porous. Right. No, my my thing would be the mm -hmm. driveway. Mm -hmm. Well, and of paving a drive, the driveway in. Good point. Yeah. And and because that can be more gravel than actually in the facility, but I mean, that's grasping. And again, it's also low use. Yeah. And low yeah. speed. The the issue I have, so we're talking all three buildings now, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, we showed those um, all three. Is, is the lighting, which I think where you're going mm -hmm. in the next one. And, you know, the four lights that are existing are perfect for the three buildings that are existing. And that's fine. But I think there still needs to be light coverage for the new. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a security issue here too. I mean, if I, if I was going to rent one of these spaces from you, I'd be comfortable if there was a light on each of those buildings. But 
was if, like if, if you ever expanded hours, sold it, and they expanded hours, then we have an issue. I, I just I think for the think safety of everybody, die with the sale. It doesn't get transferred if someone else buys it. Yeah, but we're not really good at following up on that. Well, it, no, it does run with the land. They can sell the property, and as, as long as the use exception. continues, it doesn't. Uh, okay. The zoning exception permit doesn't go away. I was going to say that would be the opportunity to. Yeah, but to but not revisit it. Yeah. Yep. Or if that entire corner was redeveloped, then it would be something completely different. Mm -hmm. Is is there a lighting requirement in the code? A minimum kind of lighting requirement? I know we were. I, I mean, obviously, I, yeah, obviously, I over lighting the place is going to be. No, we can. You know, we we and, don't want to do that. But, yeah, we understand. But but I don't know. I've never run into if there's a minimum requirement. Tell you the truth, we are used to seeing proposals for new developments with lighting. Yes, and, and whether, there's, whether it's a requirement, and, and or I not, can, that's that's our norm. And I can tell you, my normal is it's, too. But, yes, but I also, like you mentioned, most of my other clients have the key card, and they're in and out all the time, and mm -hmm. and the, okay. the the lighting uh, for for those purposes. Um, Randy has a, a little different business, but again, it's been operating this long. Well, he has the lighting at the existing though. Yes. Just, it just happened to already be there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, there. Yeah. It's there. I mean, it's there. And I know it's going to take a lot to get lighting there because those aren't your lights and there's no electricity. Oh, there is some surrounding light. And I don't want to say surrounding light, but the, the, the back, ambient light from the the back of his other business does yeah. have the the parking lot slid up so there is some surrounding light commissioners we have uh, you know the staff's recommendation is that we, we not approve this um and con as, as much as i do not like going against staff's recommendations <laughs> um i think that we have discussed enough of the issues here that we can we can resolve these I would suggest that if we do wish to approve these, that we require that it be contingent upon there being lighting on the new, lighting for the new buildings, and that the plan be updated to show that. I, I would I, agree with you. I would agree. Yeah. I would like to. Uh, we talked about some of the issues, but one of the issues we didn't discuss is the width between the buildings and getting, um, and that there's not sufficient width, but. I guess, I, and well, well, we kind of discussed that in that the existing buildings already are, exactly, are that width. That's, already, that's, yeah. well, that's what I, it's, it's I a constraint that already exists. That already exists, and yeah. somehow they've managed to deal with it. It's just not conforming to our zoning. Because usually, again, my limited experience at storage facilities, it's one or two people that it's. There's not ten people there at once. It's parallel there's, parking. Yeah, and if I'm at if I'm at one hundred three and somebody's at one hundred four. Are going to, there's room for somebody to go by oh, or, or, to go or to go around or to go around. You do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So just going off the staff concern. So, so we're okay with the limited um, parking and going through. We're okay with the lack of grab or proposed gravel mm -hmm. because it's just not a very fast place. Well, I shouldn't say we, yep. we've, it sounds like we are okay. We haven't voted on anything. And we're okay with the landscaping as proposed, being yeah. essentially. I don't mean outside, to speak for us all. But it sounds, but yeah, yeah it sounded, being outside and not inside, which mm -hmm. to me makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'd like I, to, just, I feel like there was one more lighting. thing. The lighting, yeah. Oh, but that's right. I, currently, you have a tall poles from consumers, right? Four that are, of them that yeah. are way up there, and, and you've got great coverage. I, I'm not so sure that we need to say to you, you need to have. No, you know, two more large poles, and I think there's a way to have sufficient lighting on your building attached to the building somehow. Now, you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to, for you to do this so that it's, from a security standpoint, it's okay, but it doesn't bust your budget. You know? Well, if they're attached to the building, I don't know if if the solar light is an option because there's no there's no electricity in these buildings, so I'm not real sure what. Other... In which case, it probably needs to be a pole light then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if uh, 
you know, consumers would add what they have right oh, now. They probably won't. No, no. no. they probably remove them. Yeah. I don't know. They, they still maintain the ones that are there. If I call them and, oh, yeah. Hmm. If the light's burned out, I call them. They come change it. Well, don't change that then. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to put them on a I, I would be inclined to approve this. Is, is, site plan. I'd be inclined to approve this site plan with the contingent that lighting be provided in some manner for the three additional buildings, for the new buildings. And I don't know why solar lighting wouldn't be okay. I was just saying, if, if, if you know, we were thinking of attaching them to the building, I don't know any other way to do it other than and solar. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there's no power back there because they're not um, uh, climate controlled. Sure. Uh, I guess there's... you just have to find one that is bright enough to for you and then just give us the, the data this, yeah give us the data on it some of those led yeah. are pretty intense mm -hmm. and they yeah we can do i think cast yeah, the, i think we can find some because you and maybe something adjustable so it's more directed i i was thinking lighting on the on the west end mm -hmm. yep. exactly. Me too. exactly because you're going to be yep. creating so dark spots that. along that west yep. drive lane so yep. Yep. if you had something to illuminate the that yep. path just to supplement it. Well, we could and it that. could even be motion, I would think. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I think Mr. when, Elliott, when you on right now. Mr. Elliott, please. When you uh, asked about the lighting previously, what you wanted to be sure of, because there is residential use yes. to the south of this, right. is that the lighting is going to cut off. This isn't really a photometric plan. No, no. Right. Uh, so if we could just understand for the record, the circles that you've drawn you go to zero foot candles beyond those circles yes the the information from the yeah, light is is on the drawing based uh, on this i i went to a person that does do photometric for me on large new facilities the the problem is they're also the people that are selling you the lights the pole lights all led and he didn't even have the older he couldn't plug these into his formula to, to come up with uh, the the photometric, you know, where they give yeah, you the overlay, point overlay by point, it. point by point thing. So what I did is found out what the fixtures were that were on the poles, the height of the fixtures, the information is on there for the the limits of those, the the lights where they drop down to, I think it's point one or something. For yeah, yeah, point one. The most intense is that smaller oval it, it, is one yes. foot is one foot candle. Yeah. So, okay. and, and which is what you'd usually see like in an emergency light if those if pretty the power pretty, went out. Pretty. It's directed and it's. Yeah. And, and and the pole yeah. the pole yeah. lights the pole lights at, at the back yeah. along uh, where the residences are are actually about thirty feet away from the residences and directed inward. So, <laughs> so I mean they're getting nothing back there. So. Yeah. As I said, I'm inclined to myself can't speak for the whole commission but i'd be inclined to approve this with the contingency that you show new lighting that you illustrate on the on the site plan the new lighting with a uh the lighting issues that we just discussed because if they're new lights they should be easily accessible yes okay. mr johnson what do you think i'm good with it good Oh. You need a motion, don't you? I would uh, so move based on what you just said. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, then the motion, Mr. Taylor, would be to approve the site plan. And uh, was it a zoning exception permit too? With a contingency of of providing providing uh, lighting light, for lighting for the rebuild. additional buildings, uh, showing okay. showing the kind of traditional lighting plan for that. Okay. okay. Support. The motion from Taylor. Support from Love. Is there anybody in the audience, either in person or online, that wishes to discuss or uh, say anything to the Planning Commission about this case? Okay, we have a motion, we have support. Is there any additional discussion from the Commission? Okay, Johnson. Support. Roberts. Support. Taylor. Support. Jacobitz. Yes. Love. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, I would 
uh, now that we're done with our, the business of the day, uh, I'd let you know that uh, Krista Cotton has tendered her resignation from the Planning Commission. Oh. And it's my understanding that uh, City Administrator Elliott is going to is going to or is going to recommend to the City Commission that the Planning Commission be um, specified as having seven members rather than nine. Uh, that would make us full with our current contingent. Um, and presuming they approve that, then we would want to change our bylaws to be with that. But we will, if, if it's okay with all of you, we'll wait until the City Commission does their action and then we'll reconsider our bylaws to be consistent with that. Yeah, we have a we have an ordinance that specifies that there's nine members of the planning commission, and so we propose to amend that uh, at the city commission level. It's very unusual to have a planning commission as large as nine members. Seven is a pretty yeah, how many seven city, or fewer. How many city commissioners are there? Seven. There's seven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so parity among everybody, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it just becomes difficult to to fill it, and you know. Physically, we're not set up to accommodate uh, larger bodies either. Yeah, in here. yeah. Chad wants to move closer right. to the center. Yes. Um, uh, speaking of which, and unrelated to that, though, is I would point out as, as long as we've got the people's attention, the, the zoning board has been down a member for at least two years now. They, they are specified as being five regular members and two alternates. And we have been missing an alternate. Missing an alternate. Okay. Yes, all this time. Um, which usually isn't an issue, but I, every once in a while, like tonight, I mean, we, I was worried that we weren't going to have a quarrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bob, for missing out on whatever it was you were. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know. I know. Um, but okay. Uh, so we're, we're working on that uh, change in defining our membership. Um, any other? I, I want to bring something up a, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And we need to pay attention to when our terms expire, we either renew our terms or we all get or we get expired and leave. I mean, some of us, our terms have expired a year or two ago now. I don't know how critical that is to the to the legality of the legality of our operation, but I wouldn't want you know somebody to come back and say, well, but, you know, what yeah, I, yeah, the the I think the saving grace there, Don, is is the ordinance specifies that even if your term is expired, that we continue to serve until our replacement is made. Well, but I mean, it's so it kind of gets covered. But yes, I understand. Um, but if we have submitted an application, we that we'd like to renew our term. Right. Right. It doesn't have to be approved. Yeah. Yes. We 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 used to have better communication on that. We would. I mean, we had a list of all nine people and when they were appointed and when their term was up and then if their term was up they would get a notice from the mayor saying i'd like you to to re-up or not you know but yeah and that list may not have passed when the previous person to charge yeah well they they all are all our boards and commissions are up online and yeah. this is not unique to the planning commission there's a lot of people whose terms have ex there's whole boards whose terms have expired uh, yeah um the Brownfield uh, Board, uh, the Ethics uh, board. Commission, uh, I think the uh, <laughs> commission that uh, considers compensation for the city commission is also all expired. Uh, Something we may want to clean up, I guess, is just, it's, it's mostly just housekeeping, but. Well, as uh, Don points out, you know, we act upon applications that we get and, and forward them to the mayor for her consideration of making those appointments. And so, mm -hmm. If everybody who's in that situation submits an application for renewal, then she has something to act on. Uh, that that is helpful. Okay. Um, is there any general public comments for the planning commission? Hmm? Hello, Lynn. Are you still there? I'm here. She fell asleep a while ago. Okay. Oh no, 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 I'm I'm here learning learning all the time. Okay. Uh, if there are no uh, public comments or addresses to the planning commission, we would entertain a motion for adjournment. Move, support. Motion and support. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>